good afternoon since we're just uh, past noon and uh, just before the, uh, the lunch break. It's a pleasure to uh, present at the Zach's uh, Immuno-Oncology uh, Forum at, at the Zach's conferences in, uh, in general uh, here and in, uh, in Europe. Uh, so I will, uh, as Robin suggested, and I will focus uh, today on uh, our Immuno-Oncology Pipeline but would like to um, give you some uh, you know, general overview of uh, immune. Uh, immune is uh, you know, currently a, a relatively small uh, cap uh, company, it's around $20 million in, uh, in market cap, but if you look at its assets, then you'll see a significant disconnect. Uh, you know, outside of oncology, our lead uh, drug is Bertolumumab, it's a first class, first in class, Antibody uh, originally developed by CAT uh, in two uh, phase two indications, ulcerative colitis and bullous pancreatoid, uh, which is a, an autoimmune uh, dermatological orphan indication, soon to be also an atopic dermatitis, with uh, data in late 2016, 2000 and early 2017. Uh, we also have um, cyclosporin, originally an Novartis drug, in topical uh, nanoformulated. Uh, cream for the treatment of atopic dermatitis and psoriasis. Uh, that's an area also of a lot of uh, interest. Uh, but you know, today I want to tell you why we're looking at setting up a subsidiary of immune pharmaceuticals that you know focuses on uh, oncology. You know, this is a summary of the uh, overall pipeline. You can also find that on the website. Uh, this is a New York-based. Uh, uh, management team. It was people that you know have been in the industry in major companies and in leading uh, biotech companies and have a track record. I have to say, you know, the company is almost five years old, but you know this team has been in place uh, in the last, uh, I would say, less than a year and has made a huge difference in terms of uh, execution. Uh, we have a primary location at the Alexandria Center uh, in uh, New York City, along with some big pharma and and big biotech companies. We also have a research center in Jerusalem in Israel focused on uh, nanotechnology. So let's talk about you know, oncology. You know, our pipeline includes three phase two, three uh, drug candidates and, and two novel platforms. Um, our lead asset is, uh, is Cyplin, and you know, this is a relatively uh, old asset uh, which um, had its phase three published in uh, in blood, you know, almost uh, 10 years ago, it showed uh, uh, it showed um, leukemia-free uh, survival um, in combination with low dose uh, low dose IL-2. Uh, it led to approval in Europe. It hasn't been actively marketed in Europe. It's uh, the rights are owned by Meta. Uh, in the U.S., uh, the uh, the FDA was requiring overall survival at that time and. The company who owned Cplane didn't have the resources to do it, so it's been on the shelf. But the phase four has been uh, uh, conducted in Europe, and uh, with the new data that I will, you know, disclose and which was presented at uh, ACR, you know, recently, uh, there's a lot of reason to believe that the combination of Cplane and Prolukin has uh, has a bright uh, future. Um, when this is an oncology conference, so you know the uh, the rapid emergence. Uh, of, uh, of immuno-oncology from a medical and from a commercial standpoint. Um, you know, the time in the 1990s and the early years, you know, 2000, you know, drugs like Prolukin and Tolukin 2, which, by the way, you know, was probably the first immuno-oncology drug, uh, were not totally uh, understood. So it's, and when you talk to immuno-oncology, even three or four years ago, people were very skeptical. I think the landscape is, uh, Completely change. It doesn't mean that the current drugs, you know, answer all the uh, the medical challenges, because uh, as you know, the response rates, you know, tend to be you know, 20 to 30 percent in specific uh, patient population. So, lots of deals going on, including in the uh, early uh, stage, uh, very rich deals. So, a lot of interest from uh, big pharma. Um, you know, our pipeline, Cyplin, but also two other phase two drugs, which are vascular disruptive agents and by specific and then announced in the preclinical. Uh, one of our core focus is on a uh, combination. I think you know, everybody understands that not a single immuno-oncology drug uh, will be the solution for every disease. So combining 
uh, immuno-oncology drugs or immuno-oncology drugs with other uh, molecules you know, may be the, the, the solution. And the fact that you know, we have a relatively rich pipeline for uh, a young company uh, allows us to look at, uh, at different options. So cyprine plus prolutin, you know, low dose sub Q, you know, I'm mentioning low dose sub Q because it's different from uh, uh, the prolutin high dose that's currently commercialized by Prometheus in, uh, in the US and indicated for metastatic melanoma and uh, metastatic renal uh, cancer. It's a combination immunotherapy that is approved in Europe for maintenance and prevention of relapse in AML. Um, when you look at, uh, at cyprin and its mechanism of action, and increasingly we hear from uh, scientists and peer review leaders that maybe cyprin was uh, actually uh, an immune checkpoint inhibitor before we fully understood you know, what that meant. Because in the mechanism of action, is, um, cyprin uh, binds to the H2 receptor on myeloid leukemia cells, which basically removes the breaks and allows uh, IL-2 to be active on T cells and on uh, NK cells. Um, indications in Europe, still a huge you know, medical need. You, know, you, you mentioned the acquisition of Cellator. I mean, the product from Cellator is a reformulation of standard of care, uh, but the fact that they were able to show significant benefit in overall survival you know, made it a very sexy you know, products in 2016. So it's because the medical need is, is so important. So looking back at the data from the phase three, you know, post, post hoc analysis, um, we uh, now understand that uh, the M4, M5 uh, subclassification of AML is where you get uh, the most response with cyprin and clearly in M2 you get no response. The reason is that uh, M2 doesn't have the uh, H2, uh, these two uh, receptor. Um, the poster that was presented at ACR uh, is very interesting because it looks at biomarkers that predict uh, overall survival when you use the combination of uh, cyprin and uh, prolukin low dose in a sub Q. And you know, I won't go through all of the details, but uh, if you look at this poster, you'll see that in difficult population, particularly the post-60 population, you have an extremely good response when you, after the first cure of three weeks, uh, you see a transition from uh, T cells to effector uh, T cells. So the post-op analysis of the, uh, the phase three trial, as well as this new data on biomarkers, uh, allows us to design uh, an overall survival, maybe an event-free survival, which is that's it's been a new request from the FDA for cyprin that you know hopefully will lead to its approval in the U.S. You know, based on the manageable uh, size, you know, phase uh, pivotal uh, trial. So, in in, in summary, um, you know, cyprin uh, and and probably you know prolukin at low dose have uh, a, a bright new future in novel indications such as, uh, uh, such as AML. Uh, it's important to also look at other use of cyprin and we filed the patent uh, a few months ago on the combination of cyprin with checkpoints inhibitors, so we'll be able to uh, look at other types of uh, uh, combinations. Uh, going back to uh, you know, the buzz of last week in Vaxios and, and, and Cellator, uh, they're actually not competitor. Uh, Vaxios is reformulated chemotherapy for induction uh, in uh, induction therapy in uh, AML. In a, word, a combination of two immunotherapy drugs for remission main, uh, maintenance in AML. So I think the common point is really that there's a huge medical need in different types of AML patients or at different stages of, of, of AML. And I think that's the reason why um, you know, Jazz has paid so much you know, money for, uh, uh, for Vyxos, and I was reading some of the uh, analysts, you know, reports, and they, they're talking about quite a substantial, you know, price. I don't know if it will fly in Europe, but at least in the U.S., I think that we're talking about uh, upwards of $50,000 uh, yearly treatment uh, for Vyxos, which could lead to a billion dollar in, uh, in, uh, in sales. So, again, addresses the, the medical need in, uh, in the uh, initial AML uh, patients, you know, cyprin plus prolukin, 
will address the need of patients and uh, addresses the need in Europe, but will address the need in the US uh, for post uh, first remission maintenance. Uh, very quickly, our other assets, Avixa and Folibulin, their vascular disruptive agents, that's a mechanism of action. Uh, I want to make the point that Avixa in particular is, uh, has 167 patients in a clinical experience, uh, mostly in glioblastoma, but it could be used in other indications. Uh, it crosses the blood brain bar barrier, that's why you know, it was uh, tested in glioblastoma. Uh, there's data of synergy with um, Avastin, uh, but there's also um, emerging data on uh, synergy with checkpoint inhibitors, so we'll have data later this year uh, on the combination with checkpoint inhibitors. This is actually from another vascular disruptive agent preclinical data on combination of the VDA with an NTPD1. Um, the nanomaps, which is some of the research that we're doing in Israel, uh, it's uh, kind of the next generation of uh, uh, antibody drug conjugates. It's somewhat similar to Merrimack immunoliposomes. Those are immuno nanoparticles, and they allow to uh, deliver one or multiple molecules directly. Uh, to uh, cancer cells and inside cancer cells as needed. Uh, we do have uh, preclinical you know, proof of concept using cetuximab as a targeted agent, uh, but right now you know, our focus is, uh, is primarily also on looking at uh, targeting with uh, checkpoint inhibitors or combination of checkpoint and tumor uh, uh, targets or even even uh, using cytokines uh, that can be released in the microenvironment of the of uh, the tumor. So there's a number of uh, uh, novel early projects with uh, with the nanomaps. In the bispecific uh, area, uh, we acquired the rights of uh, a new technology that was developed in Europe, funded by a 10 million euro grant. Uh, the initial validation was published in the Journal of uh, Immunology earlier this year. And we've also redirected in our development, and we've said publicly that uh, we have a bispecific antibody that targets PD-1 and OX40, and another one that uh, will target PDL1 and uh, BCMA for multiple myeloma. This is a platform that we're developing in our, in our New York lab under the leadership of uh, Dr. Boris Shore, who was previously for 12 years at uh, Pfizer in the same area. Um, so quite a number of uh, milestones, you know, Cyplin, obviously we've had the presentation at ACR. Uh, we expect to get uh, guidance from FDA for pivotal approval studies later this year. Uh, new data on Ezexa and Philippinin, as well as on the uh, early platforms. So in, in summary, you know, immune pharmaceuticals, which uh, has a broad, uh, you know, pipeline, decided to put more focus on immuno-oncology and set up a dedicated a subsidiary which uh, is in the process of receiving dedicated uh, funding. Thank you very much and open to questions.